Hello everyone, I'm uh, JP Chastain. I have a background in cognitive psychology, former Google partner, and uh, just marketing guy. Let's go with that. Uh, what I'm talking about is actually called the overview effect, and this is what happens when astronauts go to space. They see the world from space and their entire fundamental perspective changes. The best I can do right now is to remind you guys that right now you're all sitting on the side of a giant basketball. It's spinning around a star, which is out in the middle of pretty much nowhere. So right now, your perspective of up should be completely gone. Think about right now, out. There is no up, only out. Now in addition to spinning around this sun, which is already kind of heavy, we're also spinning around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So this is actually more about what we're going through right now. And it's important to keep this kind of perspective in mind because that's all we got is this planet. And I'm not a heavy or an environmentalist. I'm a cognitive scientist, if anything. So I love looking at the things behind it. There are five people I ended up talking to during this whole ordeal to find more information on. And these people are just, they're awesome people. And I want to start first with Frank White. He's the one who wrote the book on what's called the overview effect. What he did is he went around and started talking to astronauts and find out that when they get up there, they find this universal feeling of euphoria and connectedness. Like I said, I'm not a hippie, but he found this happening more and more often as he talked to these different astronauts. Edgar Mitchell, the sixth man on the moon, had something powerful to say. We went up as technicians and we came down as humanitarians. That's a big deal. These people who are so cognitively minded, you know, they went up there expecting something completely different. Now, I got the chance to talk face to face with Eileen Collins. Uh, she came to BSU. She was a STS mission leader, first woman mission leader, incredible lady. She also confirmed what I had heard through the Overview Institute, which is where I met most of these people. They see no borders up there. They look down, and it's incredible. I talked to this guy, David Beaver, also a very cool individual, helped found the Overview Institute. He works with media projection screens that are years ahead of what we're normally you know, thinking right now. Works with this thing called the Taurus screen. It's got bended edges, but even more incredibly is they're using 3D technology with this at 60 frames per second in both eyes to actually make the screen disappear. What they're gonna do is they're gonna use it to stimulate the overview effect. Somebody else who's really cool, science-wise, Sean Gallagher. He works with the Templeton Institute. He's doing all sorts of things right now with feeling what these three people have in common. And they're buried. You got people, you got somebody who studied their entire life to be a technician, to be an astronaut. You got somebody who's spent their entire life meditating. And then we have this guy, we know what he spent his entire life on as well. <laughs> now there's this place called the uh, occipital cortex. It's number 15 up there on the slide. And in space flight, there tends to be better blood flow there because the spine is usually compressing that area. As the blood flow increases, that's the same area that uh, a certain person, uh, Phineas Gage, had damaged, and so he was unable to have certain connections. Space flight's coming. It's coming, it's a real thing. We don't have to worry about jetpacks anymore or wondering if jetpacks are coming. We're going. <laughs> we have this uncanny ability, and it's still expensive. But that's 10 years out, not 20 years out. 10 years out, it'll be about 20 grand from who I've talked to. About 20 years out, it'll be even less. What's important about this is keeping everything in mind. The last time we had an enlightenment was the printing press. We had a huge explosion in literacy and communicating ideas on a level that we never had before. Now this kind of got more intense, I guess you could say, as time went on. And this is what leads us to what's called the singularity. Some of you guys, I'm sure, know about it. It's when technology gets to this point that futurists can't quite see beyond. They can't quite see what happens next because computers will be able to process things we have not even been able to get close to yet. But the printing press also brought about this, which means that we can gather analytics on such a quality scale that computers are going to start telling us things about humanity we may not want to hear. Right? We may not want to hear it. But if you don't go into this whole situation with social media with the right mindset, if you don't think about it in the right way of connecting with people, much, much like some of my colleagues over there were talking about before, we're not going to be able to appreciate this. This is all we have. And I'm sorry, but I want to play on a scale like that. I'm J.D. Chastain.